Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Conversations on Conversations, where each week we explore a topic or topics to help us have more powerful conversations with ourselves and others. I'm your host, Sarah Noel Wilson, and joining me today is a treat of a person, Shante Gordon. Let me tell you a little bit about Shante, and then we're going to get into our conversation. Shante Gordon is a dynamic DEI strategist, executive coach, and trauma-sensitive wellness facilitator and yoga teacher. She boasts a rich, multidisciplinary career spanning decades. Armed with an industrial engineering and management science degree from Northwestern University, she began in supply chain management where she uncovered workplace disparities around gender, race, and privilege. Transitioning to marketing, Shantae climbed the ranks in iconic music labels, online retailers, and fitness brands until burnout prompted a recalibration towards a more balanced life. This shift led her to wellness, a journey that is now profoundly informing her DEI strategies. She is a DEI strategist at the Norfis firm, and she adeptly merges mindfulness and trauma sensitivity with change management expertise, crafting tailored solutions for organizations ranging, ranging from small arts, nonprofits, to major healthcare companies, and most industries in between. Beyond titles and industries, Shantae's true passion lies in connecting the dots within others' narratives. Whether coaching individuals or steering organizations, she finds joy in unlocking their potential and guiding them towards their goal. Shantae is a catalyst for transformation, committed to making workplace environments where everyone can thrive. Welcome to the show, Shantae. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I'm really excited to be here. Really looking forward to this conversation. We always have a lot of fun together. So this is this is going to be great. Yeah. So we're just I mean, we're just hitting record on what you know, and we're inviting the rest of the people into our conversation. Okay, so uh, Shantae, what else should people know about you? Wow. Uh, you know, it's funny. I get this question. And I never know. I always go blank right before I, I answer it because there's so many things. We're so much. I know. This is why I love asking it because I never know what people will come up with. So I, um, yeah, gosh, I, you know, I always tend to default just to like upbringing. So I mm. am from, I am from uh, Miami originally and my family's Jamaican. And so when I was born, which was a while ago, there weren't a lot of people who were, could say that they were from Miami. That's changed now. Sure. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But most folks, it's an immigrant city. So most folks, um, their family comes from other places. And so uh, I always like to go back there because it really informs how I show up in the world mm. in terms of like being first generation, um, coming from, again, very strong Jamaican household and and kind of bridging like that, 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 that transition between like that heritage and then being American. Yeah. And so like it, it's, it's just a really interesting upbringing. Um, coming from that perspective and it and it really is this the foundation for and how I show up in the world and the work that I do so big up and shout out to Jamaica yeah I love it I um <laughs> it's funny when I think about Miami I've only been there once um what do you like love most about your hometown <sighs> Wow, my so I yeah that is a that is a interesting question because I have a bit of a love hate kind of relationship sure. with my mommy currently. Um, so I think the thing that I loved about growing up here in Miami was at the time the level of diversity and yeah. the mix of people. Right, it was so it's so different. It's not a, it's it still isn't, but especially then it wasn't a, a traditional like American city, and it was yeah. great. And it's great. So, you know, you, you have people coming in from all sorts of different places and, and being with everyone. And, you know, you had your challenges, of course, uh, that's normal. But growing up, it felt like they, we were a lot more together, mm. Felt like we, the community was a lot broader, a lot mm. more diverse. Mm. Um, I, you know, I left when I was 15, moved to Houston for two years. And that was a completely different experience than, sure. than growing up. Miami, right? Like it was the experience of being in the South, like the textbook. Yeah. South. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, this is what, oh, this is what they're talking about. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't like this. So, and then I, I spent like undergrad and grad school in Chicago, New York for a number of years, and then came back to Miami in 2012. And when I came back in 2012, I was just like, wow, this is really different. Hmm. This is not a place that I grew up in. Um, and, and, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, a lot of years have gone by, like quite a few actually 17 or yeah. so. 
Um, and so, you know, just the, 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 the city changed. And so right now I'm in this place of kind of flux with the city where it's beautiful in the winter, it's warm, it's sunny, it's gorgeous, but you know, it, it can be maybe a little vapid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like someone, you know, if you've dated anyone in the past, that was absolutely gorgeous or really beautiful, but then you have a conversation, you're like, Oh, <laughs> Mm. <laughs> <Not the brightest. laughs> do you feel so like that's how I feel right now. It, it's uh no i well it, it it is something that we you know we talk a lot about because i i live and have grown up in iowa which is an incredibly homogenous incredibly yeah. white like 93 mm-hmm. percent white and so um that's a whole different experience. Yeah. And then, you know, when you get exposed, I think the thing that was that was startling for me when I went to Miami, and this was years and years ago, um, the level of disparity of what wealth was shown mm. compared to people who didn't have any, just not that there's not that wealth disparity here. It's just, um, you don't see it on display in the same way. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you don't see Lamborghinis being driven around. You don't see um, and you know, and anyway, so that, that was, that was something that like struck me as it was like, oh, they're very, very clear, like, yes, economic structures happening. And I mean, they happen everywhere, but it was just on display in a way. You'll see that you'll see the Lamborghinis, yeah. the Ferraris. you'll see the high end cars, you'll see the high end buildings. Right. Yeah. And then a couple blocks away, little like shanty towns. Yeah. You're yeah. Just, how does this exist in one city with the blocks? But that's, that's Miami. Yeah. You're absolutely. Right. Yeah. I'd love to get back there. Okay. So Shantae, I want to know a little bit more because we haven't had a chance to, I mean, this is our first time speaking one-on-one. And so I want to know a little bit more about your journey and background. I mean, obviously in your bio, you talk about all of the different um, organizations and industries you've supported and then how you hit this point of burnout. So take us back a little bit of what what did that journey look like for you and how that's shaped how you show up now? Wow, there are so many identities and intersections and experiences that have really kind of shaped me, informed how I show up in the world, how I view things. Um, again, starting, starting with just that upbringing, that Caribbean American upbringing. Um, Going to school, uh, it was, you know, I think the, I went to performing arts who was magnet schools growing up because I, I was in mm. music. I was a I was a band geek, right? Like mm-hmm. so music. What'd you, wait, band. what'd you play? What'd you play? I played piano and violin. Do you still? Yeah. No. Okay. Could <laughs> I you could probably play my flute? I yeah. Could, but the violin and piano, not so much. But I could yeah, probably yeah. still play because that was my because I even played that through college in, in college. It. But anyway, so I um I I. I went to, so I went to performing arts schools, great, very diverse, but public schools. My mm. college experience was my first private school mm. experience. Mm. And again, it's, it's Northwestern. So it's a very, it's a, it's a top school. It's very, you know, it's, it's up there and it's, yeah. uh, it's wise. So it's a primary, primarily predominantly white institution is what they call it. And when I was in school, it was very much that because of the caliber of the school, you had to figure it out. So, you, you know, if you gain, gain some really great skills in terms of just like sink or swim, figure it out. Like there's not a lot of support. And then there isn't it just in general. Right. I, I think for anyone. Yeah. Thankfully on campus, we did, we did have, um, we had this, this, the African-American student affairs, uh, department. And so that was really one of the things that maybe even go to Northwestern because at least we had that, we called it the black house. Yeah. And so at least with that thing that, that like was the anchor for those of us, cause we were a very small population on, on campus. And so you felt like you had that support there, but it really is just navigating. What, what is this navigating race, navigating yeah. gender, navigating socioeconomic status, navigating like even intellect, right? Intelligence and navigating like just so many things and just trying to figure out your place in the world. And then um, I am, I'm a, someone who's in a bigger body. So you had that mm. factored on top of it mm. also. So, so many things are just trying to figure out, okay, well, who, who am I and what am yeah. I? We're, we're existential kind of like situation that you're dealing with. Um, so, so you're just trying to survive. You're just trying to figure out like, what do you do? You're a young person. You don't know how anything works. I went to school when I was 17. I don't know anything <laughs> of how any of this works. My, again, my family's they're immigrants, they're Caribbean yeah. people. 
Yeah. How America really, really works for real, for real. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like you get in here and you're like, ah, all right, fine. I got to make something up. I got to figure it out. So you, you just pay attention and you start to, to try to make sense of as many things as you can. And you, you, you try to put together what you think, like who you are. Yeah. So you craft yourself from various experiences, from various lessons, from everything to, to create like this persona of yourself that hopefully can help you get through the world. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, I, I, I am a creative person in general, but trying to survive, I ended up moving into an industrial engineering degree. Fine. I, I no problem. I, I didn't want to lose my math and science credits. I wanted to <laughs> graduate. <laughs> Because Northwest is expensive. So like, let's just get out of here. Um, and so I moved from the College of Arts and Sciences into the engineering school because my mother was like, you need to do something to, to make something of yourself in the world. And I'm like, okay, mom, well, what? And she's like, either business or something. I was like, well, yeah. I have an undergrad biz degree. So it's either econ or industrial engineering. Wasn't trying to do econ, went the engineering route. So that's how I ended up with that degree. After, after trying all the other degrees, like I tried chemi, I tried bio, like I went down the list of engineering to the last one. So I don't think they were going to kick me out of the school, but anyway. So we, we finished that and I start and I end up getting a job in supply chain after graduation. And that well, was cool. Wait, yeah, I, have to, I'm, I have to, I'm so curious. So I do want to pause you for a second. Sure. Because there's two things, there's two things that you've talked about that I was curious to, to, to hear more about, you know, yeah. one is this, this finding yourself and shaping yourself. Yes. Um, and, and I couldn't help but wonder for you, were you able to stay connected to your true self being in a culture yeah. that wasn't built for you being around, you know, or was there a shedding of who you were and then a rediscovery of who you were later. I just, I see that. I mean, I, I experienced that, although very different reasons of like, oh, this is who I'm supposed to be because mm -hmm. I'm looking at what other people are doing. So I was just curious for you, what was that experience like of finding yourself? Like, did you feel like you, you were shaping yourself or did you feel like you were shaping yourself to fit the system? Great question. Fantastic question. And I think that for me, if I go, if I place myself back there, there was a lot of conforming. There was a lot of, you know, taking on of ideas and ideals that mm. um, maybe weren't necessarily my own, but were ones that either, you know, society may have pushed or um, again, parents, I, you know, it's like, where do these stories come from? Yeah. Like, where do these narratives yeah. come from? And, and, and how do we take them on in order to, to, Again, it's really, it's really about survival. Like, I think it really yeah. comes down to for everyone. It's like, what, how do I, how do I make sense of all of this? How do I bring some order to anything? Cause this mm. is like completely, I don't know what any of this means or how this works. So how do we, how do we make sense of it? And so what do I need to, who do I need to be? What do I need to take on? Um, how do I need to fashion myself in order to really be able to make it? in this world. Now, I think that there is a sense of, you know, you know, to your core, like what, who you are and where you want to go. But I think there is this, there's an evolution that has to happen. And some mm -hmm. of that is, you know, you know, you, you, you have to try things on, you have to, mm -hmm. to, to figure out like, what is your truth? I think mm -hmm. a lot of this, our journey in general in life is figuring out those truths for ourselves. And so you may take something on, you may sit with it for a bit, try it on and be like, ah, no, that's not it. That's, that's actually what happened with the degree. Cause I came out with this indus industrial engineering degree, but my truth is I'm a creative. Like yeah. I, am, I am, I am a, I like being with artists. I like hanging out with creative people. Like that's where I shine. And so I'm in this space where I'm, I, cause I, I, I'm smart. Like, right. So I have, yeah. I use my brain. um, and I can apply it in a very, in, in a very structured way. Right. It, maybe it's cause I'm a musician and all that stuff. But anyway, anyway, so I can do that, but that's not where my passion is. That's not yeah. where my love, that's not where I feel alive. And so I took that on outside of school to, again, because that's, that's kind of the path. Like you're supposed yeah. to, you know, yeah. degree, you're supposed to do this thing. And I'm going through this process of, of figuring out how to apply this, these learnings, this, this degree and being in an environment where I'm like, oh, this is not 
me. This is not who I am. This is not where I want to be. How the hell did I end up here? Yeah. What is happening? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 may, it, I may be very intimate with this experience going from being a theater degree like major to moving to Des Moines and joining the insurance industry and being like, I don't even... I don't know what a cubicle is. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. It, literally, in my interview, my boss was at the time said, "Do you think you'll be able to sit still in a cubicle?" I'm like, "I don't know. Let's try it. I, I'll, I'll bring some energy at least." Like, and then realizing, oh, everyone just talks about what was on reality TV show. We don't have these like deeper conversations and explorations about life and mm -hmm. right, you know, creative projects and that. that right. Yeah, so. I wondered about what that transition was like hearing you go from music to industrial engineer. I was like, oh, oh, oh that's a, that's you know, a transition. What's funny is if I was paying attention, I would have realized that everything I did outside of school was creative in nature. Sure. Like I was dancing. I was, I was it doing, I was still playing. Right. I was, I was, I took partial credits in like the orchestra because I just wanted to play like everything yeah. I did was creative in nature and but I had this this degree and I was like I, I just need to finish again because it's expensive I need to get out yeah <laughs> it's a good yeah. degree you know, it can work but I, but when I when I after I graduated and I spent some years in that pro in in supply chain and it just got to the point where I was like I can't do this anymore I again this is not who I am I'm this and so I I had to slowly make that transition to try to get back to me. Yeah. Um, and so that's when I, I started again, extracurricular activities are all in the arts. I'm dancing at like, um, Joel Hall, which is, a, which is kind of like the Alvin Ailey of dance, okay. um, dance companies in Chicago. So I'm dancing there, right. I'm, I'm working with underground musicians and artists, just like getting in that scene in Chicago, which was really cool helping out on theater productions. Like I'm in that. And I have this old silly job over here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. And eventually I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. So I, mm -hmm. I, I leave. And, um, oddly enough, I was trying to get fired and they wouldn't fire me. <laughs> Cause you're to do I could <laughs> get fired. I have, do it. Okay. I have so many questions now. What did you know? I don't, we don't need to know what you tried. I mean, does that just God, speak to I, how I, great I, you are? <laughs> I, I, I would get it there late and leave early. And, uh, but even in that, even when I was there, I was still doing what I needed to do because I, I can't just that's like, just who you are. Exactly. But yeah. definitely not doing definitely at about a good 55 percent, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe. But anyway, so that that to me was like, listen, you're not even you're so far outside of yourself. Mm. Like you're not even because like, your value is hard work. Like that's a value. Like mm. your, your, your values are like your work ethic is strong for you. You, you, how you show up, it, it, the level of um, care that you put into things, those are values. And you're not even living that. Something's yeah. wrong. Yeah. Something's wrong here. Something's really wrong. And that's when I was like, Oh, I gotta, I can't do this because I'm not, I'm not, I'm out of, I'm out of integrity with myself. And so I transitioned away and wanted to go deeper into the creative space and so started doing that, got my graduate degree in arts, entertainment, and media management, and then worked more with the creatives of Chicago until I moved to New York. And then I worked um, in the in music industry uh, for about eight years in New York, like in it, in it, before yeah. moving to Florida. So, and then that being in that space was even crazier because I, as most of us know, the industry can, is pretty ruthless yeah. entertainment in general, specifically music. Um, and you just, you see a lot, even more things related to gender and yeah. race and power and just lack of consciousness around the impact of um, language and music yeah. and behavior and how that can really, again, the impact that it can have on someone and their lives and just, just complete disregard for mm. that. It was, it was very, it was hard. And then, so you find yourself again, outside of integrity, doing yeah. things that just trying to cope, you know, a lot of indulgences, a lot of excess, just trying to like stay sane until you get to the point where you're just like, again, not who I am. This is not sustainable. I have to do something different, but 
unfortunately not getting to that point, I guess, soon enough until uh, before like things start to break down physically. Yeah. 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 That's what happened. So that's what happened. Like the burnout happened. My mental health was not good. My physical health was not good. Things were not great. And it yeah. was just like, yet again, we got to pivot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pivot. Okay. So there's, I mean, this is part of why I was so excited to have you on the show is to hear your thoughts around and how you approach, right. This idea of, of, living with an integrity and resourcing yourself, which is something mm -hmm. that I am going to ask you to define here mm -hmm. in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm curious. So as you've been on this journey of trying to um, live in a way of greater health, well-being, I hate the word balance, but right. But like with a greater intentionality, maybe what has been your observation, you know, because burnout is, uh, it's such a prevalent topic. It's still really prevalent. It's still needed. And there's there's no one reason for burnout. But mm -hmm. I know that I've experienced and I know that I've seen people experience that burnout can accelerate when you're, to use your language, which I really love that language, you're living outside yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't even, sometimes you don't even realize it mm -hmm. because you're just like, I'm just doing what I'm just doing what everyone else is doing because I don't, maybe I don't know any different. Maybe I didn't know I could question it. That was my journey when I was like in my 20s and even my early 30s. It's like, I didn't know I could question things. I didn't, you know, I just you know, I showed up and I did the, I, I overworked and I, you know, was being asked to do something that was not, was, I, and I didn't realize it at the time, right? But it contributed to a really significant, really significant burnout crash for me. So I'm curious, like when you are uh, all the work you're doing, let me simplify my question. What are the different factors you see contribute? Like whether it's a range of like, it could be this, it could just be because you're overworked. It could be because of paint that spectrum for me. Wow. I think... I think it really, it stems from this sense of, you, you, you get this little thing that's like, huh, something isn't quite right. Yeah. Or, you know, mm, that little niggling that happens in their stomach or in your, <laughs> or in your, or in your throat, right? Those little things that come up and you're just like, something's trying to poke at you. Yeah. Right. And, and we, it, we sense it. Everyone senses it. We get, everyone gets those hits. It's whether or not you pay attention to them. Yeah. Right. And I think from that point, you have to interrogate it. Yeah. Or not. But if, if we want to be well, right. If, if we want to, to uh, live a, a healthy life, we have to kind of sit with that a bit and say, okay, so what, what are the things that could possibly be bringing this up for me? Um, is it my work? Is it my personal life? Is it all the things combined? Is it uh, a relationship in a specific part of my life? What are the things that are, and, and it requires a level of, of wanting more for yourself and, the, and being willing to slow down. Because mm -hmm. to your point that you made earlier, where it's like, you didn't even know that you could. Yeah. It's like, you have to give yourself that kind of permission and part of the permission is allowing yourself to be able to sit with it. Because sometimes we don't think we can because it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And we yeah. don't want to sit in that stuff. And it's like, I don't, I don't want to question. This is just easier for me to go through it and do it because, you know, then I don't have to acknowledge some things about myself that maybe I'm not ready to acknowledge. Or maybe I don't want to acknowledge things about others that I'm not ready to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's, but you know that something's off. Yeah. I don't think anyone can deny that something's off either. Because you feel it or you're getting the feedback. Yeah. Right. Like either you feel the feedback inside or the external feedback where someone's kind of being like, Hey, so I don't know. What, you okay. What's going on over here? Or, or you're, or you're yeah. getting this kind of, yeah. you're getting the information, but you're not putting the dots together. So I think it starts with that. And then, you know, burnout in general, if folks aren't really familiar or, or don't or questioning whether or not they're experiencing it, it's just a general, it's like an energetic thing. You don't have the energy you once had. 
you don't have the work product or whatever, whatever, you know, you're used to whatever level you're used to performing at just isn't there. There's a lack of engagement. You just, you're, you know, yeah. it's kind of, blasphemy, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, and so with, with, un, within all of that, there's just a, a dampening of the spirit. Mm. It feels like, right. Mm. And so you, you, when you're, you, the goal is to, well, not, I don't even know if it's a goal, but it's, it's constant, like, okay, I, I gotta sit, I gotta be with myself in a way that allows me to see myself. Yeah. Where am I going? How am I, how am I moving through these things? What's showing up for me? And, and it's not an easy thing to do. Um, you know, I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm answering even your question yeah, or going you are. the direction I want to go in, but burnout is really tricky. It's really tricky. And, but it, it, I don't know if it can be avoided. Yeah. Because there's an aspect of it that maybe you need it. Mm-hmm. Because how else do you know that you need some redirection or you need yeah. to make other choices or you need, right? Like it, it, if you can view it as an opportunity, if you can view it as something that's beneficial, even if when it's tough, yeah, there's, there's real magic in it. So that, that's, that is, that's such a gift of perspective that can be really hard in the moment to consider. Mm-hmm. I remember, uh, when I got out of my first like career in insurance, uh, completely, I mean, just physical burnout, mental burnout, uh, moved into this amazing company, amazing job. Within six months, I developed panic disorder, which no surprise, because I remember telling my, th- my, my therapist, I was like, what the hell? Why did it come up the last eight years when I was like working 60, 70 hours? Like, I'm in this amazing job. I'm doing the work I want to do. I have this amazing support. She's like, that is why <laughs> like your body is finally. But my, I remember after having uh, just a really, uh, really challenging series of panic attacks, my friend Shadley said, maybe this is what you need to shed and break open to open you up for something different. And I remember being like, well, this fucking sucks. I don't want to, you know, and I, but I, I think that's really, I think it's provocative what you're sharing of maybe we can avoid it. Maybe that's part of the trying on. Maybe that's part of going down a path and going, you know what? Maybe, maybe this isn't for me. And I, and I also love that visual of, the the niggling, the little mm-hmm. niggling feeling. So it's like I've never heard that word or used to describe it. I was like, that is very accurate. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. It's like it is. Of- it's just this little Yeah. Why why do you feel like and and I don't and this is a this isn't an an answer. I'm just philosophically. I'm curious to yeah. get your perspective. Why does it feel like it has to be such an act of courage for people? Such an act of bravery. To say, you know what, this is actually who I am, or this is what's important to me. I mean, I'm I'm sitting here. I know Nick is listening to this right now, right? This has been part of his journey on mental health. Of like, he is a creative, right? He's he's not this career driven guy, and that was really. And and I'm not sharing anything he hasn't already talked about previously on the show. So I want to be really. I'm always thoughtful about sharing other people's stories, but it is like this act of uh, rebellion against the system to say, Mm -hmm. you know what, this is, this is going to be me. This is how I'm going to show up in the world. And, and it, and it could be something as simple as I remember when I first started speaking, I had somebody go, Sarah, people won't take you seriously unless you're wearing a suit. And, and Mm -hmm. and now fortunately I was at a point in my life where I was like, well, we'll see about that. (laughs) Like Like I found, I found myself, but then, but even then it was like this act of, rebellion, just to not wearing a matching mm-hmm. suit, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So why, why, why? Shantae, answer the question of the world. <laughs> why does it have to be so much effort to, to discover and just own who you are? I mean, again, I, I, I have thoughts, but. Why is it so much effort? Gosh. It's an act of bravery sometimes for folks, isn't it? It is. It is. And I think when, as you're talking and what comes up for me is that there is so many, so many images coming into my head. Like one is of like a diamond, mm. right? And the pressure that a diamond has to, to withstand in order to become a diamond, like the piece mm. of the, 
is it coal, carbon, whatever yeah, it is, yeah. in order to become, right? Like there's so much pressure and resistance mm-hmm. and tension and just fire and heat and all these things that you have to just to, just to shine the way you need to shine. Um, and then also, if you think of like a, a sculpture, uh, you have like a block of whatever material it is and you have a sculpt, uh, sculptor who's, who's creating this beautiful mm. sculpture out of it. That's a lot of hard work and it's a process mm. and it's a lot of like, and it's a lot of, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of the point. Yeah. Because that's to me, that's like the journey mm-hmm. of it's, it's self-actualization. It's, it's, it's remembering who you are. It is, it is, it is, it is being authentic and in your own truth in such a way that is in service to others so that others can do the same. Because I think that's, yeah. that's the whole point of us and then we're probably going into this very like esoteric i love it right it. now right? i think that that is part of the journey that's part of, of why we're here is to experience that and learn what we need to learn in becoming or remembering who we are yeah. right so it's like it, it can't be easy otherwise what's mm. the point like mm. would there be value there like you need yeah. you need some challenges you need, you need some rain, you need sunshine, you need all those things in order for it to make sense. And I think it wouldn't be a satisfying, yeah. it wouldn't be a satisfying if you, if you were just allowed to like, if you didn't have to go through some challenges, if you didn't have to, cause I know for me being able to share my story, the way I share it feels so much more rewarding Yeah. because I, I, I my background, I, there's pride in it now mm-hmm. because of it, because yeah. of the journey. Yeah. Right? And I think that, I think that there's, there's, you, you just value it more when you have to struggle struggle right mm-hmm. yeah when you go through some things i think that you just end up it just it's sweeter yeah it makes it sweet so i you know hmm. i love all of this <laughs> i again it's 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 holding different perspectives on it of mm-hmm. maybe the goal isn't for it to be easy the goal is just to make progress maybe the goal isn't you know and in a hundred percent i mean that's been my personal experience of when i look back at some of the hardest things i went through that have shaped me i wouldn't have you know in the moment i didn't want it to be so hard sure but but looking back it's like i wouldn't be who i am Without it, you said something very quickly, though, that I want to go back to and highlight, which is that idea of when you are in your authentic truth, you do show others and give, whether it's giving permission or role modeling or, be, you know, and that's something that, I mean, that was something I needed to see, right? Because when I first started, I was like, well, nobody's questioning it. And it took somebody pushing me to be like, why are you? And I'm like, I, can I, can I question this? Can I, can I do something different? Mm. And, um, and I think about, I feel very fortunate in a privileged situation that I have been rewarded since going, like creating the company, we have been rewarded for being ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. We have been, and so, so then people will come up to me and say, oh, I just like, I just love how real you are, or I love how authentic you guys are. And what I realize is like, they're not actually saying that about us. They're saying that, like, I always, I always receive that, whether it's right or wrong is like, that's something they want for themselves, mm-hmm. you know? And so I love that. I, I love that idea that part of it is a gift for you. And part of it is to show other people like, yeah, this, this, who are you now? Like who who of you needs to be revealed or pressed into some amazing precious gem? So I, I love all that imagery. Yes, mm. yes, 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 yes. That's it's great because it's it's that you know we're 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 wired for connection, mm. right? And we're and we we as much as some of us. I mean, this society makes us you feel like it's all about the individual and yeah. pull yourself up by your bootstraps and all that. Yeah, okay, that's great. But we are community oriented folks. We need one another. We need connection and we need community. And so without that, we just, we don't have, speaking of resources, right? Like I, I know we want to get into that conversation. Yeah. We just, that is also a resource, right? Yeah. Like the, 
the energetic connection that you can have from someone, the meta, the physical, the spiritual, like these things that help to pour in and you can pour in others that allow all of us to rise. Like it's, yeah. it's really, really important for that. And so we have to, we, if we can't do it for ourselves and if we're very service oriented people, then maybe that's the motivation we need, right. Yeah. To be able to, to go through whatever changes we need to go over whatever, through whatever discomfort we need to, to endure in order to, uh, you know, move through our journey, how we need to, maybe that's not fully for ourselves. Maybe it is for others and that we're just a part of the evolution of others as well. Yeah. What this idea of community Something that was coming up as you were talking about it that I hadn't thought about before is, especially in American culture, because we are such a, the message is individualism. The message mm -hmm. is that I find for myself and I find with other people, they don't even know what it's like to be in true community with other humans. And I don't mean that, and, and I'm not saying that from... um a judgment place. But when you haven't experienced it, and I can't help but wonder with your Caribbean background, or I mean, I don't know a ton about the culture, but my assumptions and my observations are it's very community driven. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I think about that for my own experience, you know, my family is, we're really tight. And, and I love that. But then when my brother, my brother married an amazing woman from Mexico, and you're like, oh, damn, that's what community can look like, right? Like that that sense of family is any anyone you meet is now like you're part of the family now. And it is this deep, deep connection. And so, I mean, this is going to be a conversation for another day. But how do we even cultivate and help people understand, you know, community isn't just a neighbor. It's just not it's just not living next to each other. It, I mean, to use your language, it's it's pouring into each other. It's being there for each other. It's being able to, you know support each other and examine life together and all of all of this we just do it mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. yeah it is uh it's it's action oriented it's, it's an active mm. type of thing it's it's not community just isn't it just doesn't happen it's not a noun it takes, it's not it, mm. you have to take it's work you have to put in work um you have to be intentional about it about building it um and you know you you listen, not everyone's for you. You're not every mm. for everyone, right? Like, so you find your people. Um, but even in that you have, there is some work that's required, um, in order for it to, in order to really find true community. And so it's like, you got to define that for yourself and, mm. what, and what that looks like, um, based on your values, based on your boundaries, based on, you know, all those things, but it, it really is, it, it takes a lot of work and, um, you know, but we need it. Yeah. There are plenty of studies that show that if we, we without the social connection, without, we don't last very long. We yeah. our, our quality of life suffers. And so it's really important for us to, to really prioritize that. I don't, yeah. I don't know if this country really, really prioritize community the way we should. Um, it's funny. You mentioned like your, your, um, your family members, my ne my nephew married uh, a Mexican American girl and she's wonderful. And we went to Ensenada mm. for my nephew's 30th birthday and, uh, language barrier all the way. Sure. Like, yeah. Understand. But when I tell you there was such connection yeah. and community yeah. and fun and family, and it was like, we laughed so much and we had such a great time. Again, no actual words yeah. were exchanged yeah. <laughs> that we could yeah. understand. But we still had the best time with one another because it, we just there was a shared value system. There was a shared there's shared energy. There's shared like that connection and and but it took us being open and willing to connect in that way. And I think yeah. that's that's something people don't really realize. Also, it's a two way street. Mm -hmm. As much as you, you want someone to be to be open for you, you have to be open for others, mm -hmm. and that, that can be tough. In yeah, the, the world. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, I want to make sure that we talk about the gift you gave us all of resourcing yourself. So yeah, yeah. when we were, when, when Teresa and I met with you and Natalie and we were just chatting, we, uh, I think we were talking about self-care. I don't even remember what we were talking about, but you introduced to us this language of resourcing yourself. And mm -hmm. I have to tell you that 
that has become such a gift for mm-hmm. uh, us. So we're, we constantly ask, you know, if we know we're going to, into a busy time, if we know that somebody's sick, what, what, it doesn't even matter, right? It's not even challenging, but just what are you doing to resource yourself? And I wanted to tell you this story. Mm-hmm. I was working with a client, an executive coaching client who their company was going through a lot of, lot of, um, leadership change. There was a lot of loss of what the culture was to what it was becoming. And they were, uh, they were in a really, really tough spot. And I was talking to them about just what, what is, what do they need to be intentional about as far as resourcing themselves? And, and at first they were confused by it, you know, and then we talked about it. And then it was like a month later, they came back and said, I understand now. Mm. I understand now because when I spend time with my kids, that's resourcing myself because when my partner and I were able to have time together, that was resourcing myself. So, Mm. so I want to share the ripple effect, not only with our company, but also with our clients. So thank you for that. And what does it mean to, how would, what does it mean to resource yourself and how is that different than this idea of self-care? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that question. And thank you for sharing that story with me. That's that's really powerful. Um, and I and I have to give uh really like props and credit to like a lot of the wellness work that I do and being in those spaces because that's where the idea comes. That's where I was introduced to this idea um in that in that space. And so resourcing, if you think about it, the word itself is it's like what do you need? Uh, material asset, money, whatever it is, energy, whatever it is that you need in order to function, in order yeah. to operate, in order to like be able to do something. And so you, when you resource yourself, it's that idea of, okay, so there's something that needs, that I need, I need to something, I, I'm not at a full tank <laughs> or I'm not, you know, in a, in a place to really be able to accomplish what I want to accomplish. And I need something. Um, it could be internal or external, right? Because we can resource ourselves internally as well. Meditation, yeah. walks, like those kinds of things. Um, or it could be external, like you said, connecting to loved ones, um, animals, nature, et cetera. And so it really is about, okay, what is what is the thing that I need in this moment that will allow me to operate, mm. that will allow me to function? I'm not feeling like I'm doing it at my best right now. There's a bit of a gap. How do we fill the gap, <laughs> right? And so to me, that's what resourcing is. Um, it, from a from a from a, a distinction with the self care uh, aspect of it, I mean they're similar, right? Like it is it is a form of self care to because you're like I I know I have I'm 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 not full right yeah. now, and so I need something. Um, but the self care to me, hmm, it feels sometimes like it's an option where mm. where resourcing to me feels more like it's a necessity. Yeah. Like if I don't have gas in my car, my car doesn't run. Yeah. It's still a car is still going to, but it can have wheels. It can have everything else, but without the gas, it's not going anywhere. It's a bit more urgent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to say how, how it's shifted for me is resourcing has put me into a much more proactive mindset mm-hmm. where a self care was more reactive, yes. right? right. Self care was to heal instead of to prevent. And, yeah. or even just to minimize. And, um, and so for me, that's, that's the shift, right? I mean, you know, language can become semantic. And so it's whatever mm-hmm. resonates for people, but there's something mm-hmm. about this idea of, right, I, I'm not going to be able to make this journey if I do not fill up my mm-hmm. tank now. And so like, right. I can't, I can't run this car into the ground. So it's, what do I need to do? It's not something that can be played with, right? Yeah, it's not enough. Yeah. Not it's not a, oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll no 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 no. You no. This is you got to do this. Like this is this is something. And I love the idea that it's proactive, um, and it's prioritized. Yeah, we, we, we de- deprioritize self care all the time. Like oh yeah, I should maybe I maybe I can fit, find time to do that. No, you. This is something that has to happen um, in order for my life to function. And so uh, to me, resourcing is a lot more powerful yeah. for that reason. Um, and it, it takes away some of the, <laughs> sometimes self-care can be a little woo-woo. Like people yeah, always yeah. think about it where it's like, ah, oh, that's, that's for those types of people. Yeah. Resor- I think everyone can find a way to relate to, to having to resource themselves. Yeah. 
anyone, any people with male, with, with like, you know, masculine energy, people with feminine energy, people with a hybrid of everything. Like you can find a way to connect with this idea of resourcing yourself and find what's appropriate for you. What's one of your favorite ways to resource yourself that you've discovered Um, along the way? Gosh, there's so many. Uh, I love to dance. So dance is always a way to, for me to, to get my energy up and to, release all the chemicals, the feel good chemicals in the body and the brain. So that's, that's one of my favorites. Um, and then the beach, I love the beach mm-hmm. being with on the sand and by the water. Uh, thankfully I live in a place where it's not that far away for me to get to, but man, I tell you, I get there and I literally just drop Yeah, <laughs> in say like 30 minutes, an hour. I am, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's such a, well, I think that's the other thing I love about resourcing is it's, it's a find your own manual, right? What, what is it for you? And, you know, for me, it's, I don't have bodies of water. I'm landlocked, you know, (laughs) Iowa doesn't have many, most of the the bodies of water are man-made, but, uh, my backyard is like this little mini forest. And so just being able to sit out on my deck Mm -hmm. is the just to just be out in nature or, or even, um, yeah, like I think that's the thing that I've really pushed myself and my colleagues and I've been pushing each other and Nick and I've been pushing each other and with clients is just to be a little bit unapologetic about it. You know, that is a word, Sarah. It's, it's giving permission. Yeah. I love that. It's like, I get to make the rules guys. (laughs) This is my life. Yeah. I can make the rules. Of course, listen, there, yes, there are things, there are boundaries, there are systems, there are, you know, you're still working within a framework of some, and some but there is flexibility in that. Mm-hmm. And you get to choose, you get to write your own adventure. Um, you know, my favorite nursery rhyme I'm going to share with you. Yeah. It's a row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Uh-huh. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Uh-huh. That's, how I, that's how I feel about it. It's like, there's an ease that can, that you can, mm. you can exist with, right? Like you can just go down, you can merrily, like it doesn't have to be a struggle. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't have to be so hard and life is but a dream. You can create literally whatever you want to create for yourself, right? If you allow yourself to, to be in that space. And again, I don't want to diminish people's struggles. I don't want to yeah. diminish. Yeah. But you can always give yourself a little bit of a timeout to imagine and get mm. creative mm. and then give yourself some freedom in your mind. Right. Yeah. And then come back to whatever you need to come back to. But there is, but even just doing that little bit of thing over time, you do it enough, things will start to shift. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Shante, I love talking <laughs> with you. We're just talking we're, with you too. We're going to need to have like a quarterly conversation with Shante and we I'm just talk about all this stuff. Okay, Shante, since it's the yes. first time you've been on the show, uh, we okay. always ask all of our first guests this qu- question, and it is, what is a conversation you've had with yourself or someone else that was transformative? Well, wow. Um, I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and own that. Do like, it. I, I love it. Life, right? um, and I think it, it it is a phrase that I've heard, it, I think comes from the Buddhist Buddhist teachings, where it, uh, the phrase is pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Mm, mm. And so I'm constantly like replaying that in my head. If I find myself getting a little too caught up, mm. um, cause equanimity is like always, that's like my, my goal in life is to kind of be really fairly even, um, not robotic, but yeah. still like not yeah. way all over the place. And so for me, it's always that reminder of, Hey, Life is about going through some challenges that's going to happen, but don't contribute to your own like suffering. Mm. Like don't add to it and make it worse because of things that you are doing. Right. Like, so be mindful of that. So I think that's the thing for mm. me that's helped me to really like, okay, pull it back down, shift a bit. It, it's okay. You're going to be okay. Everything is temporary. Right. Like it's going to move through. Yeah. Slow passing, right. But you don't have to make it a hurricane. Mm. Just roll yeah. that boat gently down the stream. Okay. Shante, I am I am forever going to associate you with that, <laughs> that now Please. and I love it so much. Okay, Shante, you're yes. amazing. If people want to Please connect with you and learn more about the work that you do, the work that you and Natalie and the crew do at the Norfis yeah. Farm, what is the best way for people to connect with you? 
Well, for the Norpus Firm, it's thenorpusfirm.com. And then all the socials are there if you go to the bottom of that page. For me on Insta, it's my name, Shantae S. Gordon. LinkedIn, I think, is the same. Either Shantae Gordon or Shantae S. Gordon. Like That's pretty much it across all the socials. Um, I'm primarily on LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, so yeah, you can find me there. I love it. You're such you are such a gift. I'm so glad that we were able to have thank you on the you. show. And thanks for saying yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. I love I, talking to you. I likewise. Likewise. <laughs> Our guest this week has been Shante Gordon. And as you can hear from the conversation, I simply adore this woman. And there's a lot of insights. I'm still chewing on that whole idea of maybe the goal isn't to completely avoid burnout, but maybe that's just what has to happen in order for us to pivot. I don't know how I feel about that yet, but it's certainly provocative. And we'd love to hear from you. Send us what resonated for you or what came up for you at podcast at sarahnollwilson.com, where I read and respond to every email that we receive. And if you've been a listener of the show for a while, or if this is your first episode and you want to support the show, there's a couple of ways you can do it. If you haven't already, please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show on your preferred podcast platform. This helps us increase exposure so that we continue to have really great conversations like the one we did today. And if you're interested in supporting the team financially, you can do that by becoming a patron. You can go to patreon.com slash conversations on conversations where your financial support will support the team, but you'll also get early access to episodes that are ad free and you'll get limited edition conversations on conversations swag and who doesn't want that. Speaking of the team, let's give them some love to our producer, Nick Wilson, our sound editor, Drew Knoll, our transcriptionist, Becky Reinert, our marketing consultant, Jessica Burge, and the rest of the Snowco crew. And just a final big, big hug thank you to Shantae Gordon for bringing her insights, her heart, her wisdom, and just being her. Well, my friends, this wraps up this week's episode of Conversations on Conversations. And remember... When we can change the conversations we have with ourselves and others, we can change the world. So until next week, please be sure to rest, rehydrate, and we'll see you again soon.